Hey guys, welcome to this ARC video. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain the breeding mechanics in ARC Survival Evolved. So to get started, we have two dinosaurs here. These are two dodos. And if you go and have a look here, you can see we have a male and we have a female. Generally throughout ARC Survival Evolved, creatures will have genders male and female, and you need to have a male and a female to breed with each other to create a baby. So when you have a female around a male or a male around a female, they'll have the hearts above the head, and this means they are mate boosted. This means they actually get 1.3, like um, a 1.3 boost or like a third increase to their attack. So it actually makes them do more damage when they're around a partner of the opposite gender. Now, in terms of breeding, it's quite simple. You need a male, you need a female, and you'll see often when you hover over a, like a dinosaur, you'll see it right at the bottom. It says enable wandering or mating to mates. Now, all you have to do is like hold the E button and then go behavior and you can go enable mating. Now this will turn mating on for it and you just have to have the same thing done on the opposite dino over here. You just enable the mating and it will start mating. Alternatively, if you have dinosaurs on wandering and they walk next to each other or they're like in a closed area, they will mate with each other when they're close enough. There is a range distance. They have to be close enough to, to mate with each other. I think that one's ready to mate. This one's also ready to mate, but I think they're just a little too far for some reason. Let's see. How about now? There we go. Now, Keith, look at them. This is so romantic. This is like, this is like true love. There are some dinosaurs in the game that don't have a gender and can, can like just mate regardless with anything. The snails for one can do it and the maywings as well. Maywings do not have a gender so that they, they can breed with pretty much every other maywing around them. So you can have like a, a giant maywing party and they'll all have babies together. If you don't want your dinosaurs to be able to breed for some reason, like maybe if you're trading it or if you're worried somebody's going to raid your base and steal your dinosaurs and basically raise them and have the exact same dinosaurs that you have, you would then go to options and you would spay them. Spaying them makes them so that they're never able to have babies again. This is not an effect that you can undo though, so beware. So once the dodos are done mating, you'll see an egg will fall from where the female was standing over here. And this one is already incubating because the temperature is perfect, but I'm going to get to that in a bit. First, I want to explain Pokemon, I mean, dinosaur stat levels. So levels in Ark are very important. You can see here, for example, this dodo is level 84, this one's 84, but they don't have the same stats, right? A, a level of a dinosaur gets divided up into the stats that they have. So if I go look at this dodo, for example, you'll see here, I haven't touched any levels. Both of these were spawned in to add at like a tamed level 56, and they're, they've tamed out at level 84. So they're both level 84, but they don't have the same stats. Like if I look at the health here, you see it's 128.4. But if I look at this one, this dodo over here, the health is 136. They're the same level. You would think that they would have the same health points, right? No, all the stats are random. Those 84 levels get separated amongst health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, melee damage, as well as movement speed, which is often considered a wasted stat, especially for flyers, because they don't actually benefit from having a movement speed increase. So if they have points in movement speed, it's generally wasted because it doesn't do anything. So the reason why level is important is when you're out there taming dinosaurs, you need to make sure you tame them at the highest level possible and you also kind of keep their taming effectiveness as high as possible so that they come out with the highest possible level. This is to ensure that you get the highest chance of getting stats into the right thing here. So you can see here, there are seven stats here, health, stamina, oxygen, food, weight, melee damage, and movement speed, right? So we have those seven over there. Now, what you essentially have to do is think about this 84 is divided into seven groups. There might be seven points into health, 10 points into stamina, 12 points into oxygen, 10 points into food, and so on and so forth. Sometimes you can be lucky and you can get a dinosaur that has more points out of the average into one stat than the other, like health, right? So this one has a higher health. You know, you can see here it has 136, its melee damage is 333, and this one here, its melee damage is 319. So this one got stats in, in crappy places in terms of like, you know, health and melee. Now what happens is when you breed these two dinosaurs together, you get a a mix and match between what the parent stats are, like the, the, the female, the mother over here. You get some of these stats. This has a chance to pass onto the baby, and so does this. And it becomes like a, a chance kind of thing where one of those get picked onto the baby. Now this is the baby that they just made. And if we go in here and we see we have one to eight, it picked the health that came from the mom. So it's not the good health, but if we go ahead and we look at the melee damage, the melee damage is 333, which is what came 
from the dead. So essentially what you're doing in breeding is you're trying to create a dinosaur or a baby that has both the best traits of the mom and the dad so that it is better than both of its parents individually. Like this one, if it had the best health and the best melee damage, it would be better than its mom and its dad. Other way around, because that's the dad. Now, there is a very important thing you should know that some people don't realize, like, especially early on in the game, is that your base stat, right? So this one, when it was tamed, it was at 128. That is its base stat. When it passes on to baby, it will always be this stat, the 128. But if you level up its health, the baby is not going to now have 172. It's still going to get that 128 instead, no matter how, how, how many points you put into here. So you have to, every time you tame something, take a record of of what its original stats are because those are going to be the stats that pass along to the baby, not the level ups that you add in afterwards. There are two types of babies you can have in Ark Survival Evolved, and the first one is the most common one. It will be eggs. Your, your dinosaurs will drop an egg that needs to be incubated, and it will hatch into a baby dinosaur after you've incubated the egg. I will show you how to do this in a little bit, but here you can see Rexes, for example, drop a fertilized egg, and then you take this egg and you have to give it the perfect temperature. As you can see right now, it says too cold. You have to make it warm. You got to warm it up with things like air conditioners and fires and stuff so that this thing can hatch and incubate. But the other thing is some dinosaurs or creatures, I guess you could say in the game, do not lay eggs. Instead, they, they gestate, they become pregnant. So same for like thylacoleos, for example, you can see here, these two are mating. And in a little bit, the female here is going to get pregnant and is going to gestate and it's going to start a whole new timer. As you can see here, mating is just about to finish and now it's gonna start a new timer called gestation. And once this timer of gestation is over, there's gonna be a baby that will pop out directly on the ground. It won't be in an egg and it will be immediately available for you to imprint on it. So you have to be around to look after the baby as soon as it is born, much like after you hatch an egg for the first time. Right, and it's just about to give birth. You're gonna see here in a few seconds there, there is its baby, which is capable of having twins and or triplets, just like the eggs can do. And all you have to do is imprint. Now, the reason why imprinting is so good is that when you imprint a dinosaur, and you manage to get its imprinting stat or its thing over here. You can see here when you go look at it in its inventory, one that has been bred, it imprinting here, it has a 0% to 100% counter here. Your job is to get this to 100 or is as close to 100% as possible because if you get this to 100%, this means when you ride this dinosaur or this creature, once it is fully grown, it will have 30% extra damage it will do 30% extra damage, which, which is a lot. 30% is a lot of damage. And it will also take 30% reduced damage from things attacking it. So, but this is only, however, when you are riding the dinosaur or the creature. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work if you're not riding it. So you have to be on the actual dinosaur for that to take effect. So if we look at our growing thylacoleo over here, you can see its imprinting is already to 20%. I got this to 20%. Now we're waiting for its next ne its next one here. In five seconds, it's gonna tell us what it wants us to, to give it or do for it, right? So here we go. It's going to, it wants to cuddle with you. This is the perfect one because cuddle with you means you just have to press E and its imprinting is going to up, go up. But sometimes it'll be like wants to eat you know, raw prime meat or something, wants to eat meat. All you have to do is put it in the last slot of your hot bar and you press E and you'll be able to feed it that food. If it needs to follow you, if like it wants to play with you, all you have to do is let it do this, run around while it's following you, much like so. Now, with the cuddle one, all you have to do is press E and once you've done this, you'll see it goes imprinting up plus 50%. Again, that is specific to the settings I'm playing on right now. And you can see here, this increases it to 70% imprinting. So this is 70% of that 30% extra damage and defense increase while I'm riding it. If I don't get the full 100, I don't get the full 30% increase later on when it's fully grown. So you wanna try get that to 100% as early and quickly as possible while it's growing up. So pay attention to your babies and look after them, okay? Now, if we talk about how to hatch eggs quickly, now what you do is you throw down an egg, right? Normally you'll see it says the, the, the temperature requirement right underneath the like fertilized Rex egg says too cold. We need some heat, right? There's two ways of doing this. The most common way that people eventually get to is using air conditioners around an egg to make the temperature perfect, right? So here we go. The temperature is now perfect. It's incubating the egg. Alternatively, you can also use like standing torches or campfires or 
anything that produces a heat source, right? So if I go here and I look at this and say it's too cold, if I go ahead and I put these fires on, it should be able to incubate the egg as well because it creates a sense of heat around this area and it's able to incubate the eggs as well. So if you're not in the stage where you have air conditioners and all this technology just yet and you're in early game, you can just use standing torches and, you know, fill them with like fuel, like wood, spark powder, something to let them burn. You can also still incubate your eggs early on in the game. Once an egg reaches the end of its incubating countdown timer, the baby will then hatch from the egg and become just a baby, much like you saw from the, the thylacolia over there, and also has a chance of being twins or triplets or even getting mutations, which is something I'll talk about in a bit. One thing you also need to make sure of is when you have a baby that you put food in its inventory to feed it because its food stat is very low and will often run out very early on because as a baby growing up, it doesn't eat from a feeding trough until it hits 10% maturation, which, which on default or official settings takes some time. So this means your dinosaur can die before they even get to feed. So you gotta make sure you put food in its inventory to keep your dinosaur growing and alive. Some dinosaurs in the game require specific foods and things to eat when they're babies, like wyverns, for example, baby wyverns need wyvern milk. Magmasaurs need sulfur. So that's pretty much the basics behind breeding. It does take a little bit of practice and just, you know, experimenting. And it's very fun to create your own dinosaurs just from having a male and a female and turning them into an entire army for your base. Because that's all you need, a male and a female, very good high levels, and boom, you are sorted. You never need to tame another one again. And that is predominantly the reason why breeding is a huge thing in ARK, because you want to make the best dinosaurs to do the most damage and be the most successful in, in artifact caves, doing bosses, and etc. etc. Now this does get a bit more broader when you go into mutations because mutations are a thing where you breed one dinosaur with another and there is a chance for one of the stats to mutate and the baby might even get a mutated color as well like there might be a new different color region which I'm sure you've heard of mutations before. Now I'm not going to explain that in this video because I have a perfect video that I've already made that explains breeding for mutations perfectly well and you can see that video on the screen right now in a video card. It's also in the description as well and I'm going to leave you guys there. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. If you do have any questions, let me know. I do reply to every single comment and thank you so much for watching this video.